hit the like button. We're trying to get the 300 likes. Um, go ahead, um, P. Ray. What, what's your thoughts? So I am the hostess of Black Excellence Hour. It's a show for people with high self-esteem on WVON 1690 AM Chicago. My show is rapidly turning Black Chicago bright red. Um, if you can want we see, one, saw some headlights can we coming see, forward. Can we see a, um, can we see a, um, do you have a link to your show? Can yeah, you, uh, I can um, find it. I'm new to all of this. I'm like the most technology adverse person ever, which is why I'm on the radio. Um, but I can, I'll definitely shoot you a link in the chat once we're done and you guys can check out the show. Now, if you heard Brandon Johnson, our mayor, Brandon Johnson yesterday, he did a press conference denouncing evil right wing conspiracies. I mean, evil right wing extremists who are turning black Chicago out. He's talking about me, you know, dead. He's talking about me directly mm. um, because we are rapidly turning the city red. One thing that I share with our people is that one, a lot of people say Chicago people get what they voted for. And I want to explain something to everybody so that we all understand. Chicago people are not voting for this people. Uh, what's happening is there is a conspiracy um, that has been uncovered in the Cook County Board of Elections. What happens is the people in the Cook County Board of Elections are able to manipulate the ballot petitions. And so people who are qualified to be on the ballot never end up on the ballot. And this was uncovered because our city treasurer, the treasurer of the city of Chicago, and her husband, who was an alderman in the uh, budget committee chair, he, the two of them went to a senior citizen building with a um, staff member from the treasurer's office. They went with a box of ham. They told the uh, senior citizens, come on downstairs, we're going to give y'all a ham for the holidays. But y'all got a sign to get the ham. So the elderly people get on the elevators, they start coming to the lobby, they're signing. How about they were signing petitions, election petitions, and they did not know they were signing election petitions. Mm, and two election officials brought that to their house. Damn. These people, um, and so now there's a, an investigation, the Office of Inspector General um, is investigating. This is all over the Sun-Times. This is real life information. So when we talk about the voting patterns of the people of Chicago, you have to understand that we are in a system of disenfranchisement that runs very, very deep. Um, I'm also reminding our people that the Democratic Party is the party of the Confederacy, right? Um, these are the people who fought to keep us in slavery. And so the Chicago Democratic Party, their roots are deep in the Confederacy because there was a POW camp here called Camp Douglas. And this is where they marched the worst of the worst of the Confederates. Chicago has the largest mass grave site in the Western Hemisphere, and it's filled with Confederate bodies, okay? Um, so when they had these Confederates on the south side of Chicago, the Chicago Democrats in the Confederacy used to wage war on this place. They went to Canada and tried to sail across Lake Michigan to attack Chicago that way. And so I've been asking for the Chicago Democrats to denounce their Confederate past. They won't do it. So we know that these people are racist, but our people, because other things have not been offered to them, they didn't know. And that's why my show works, because I give the people the straight, straight truth. So when we talk about Chicago, stop saying, oh, they get what they voted for, y'all vote race, all this stuff. No, no, friends. This is what's presented to us. So even in this so are you last... saying, mm -hmm. let me just stop you right there. So you're mm -hmm. saying that. That one spirit, that one thing where they got those senior citizens to sign that petition. You're telling me the average sister in Chicago is not just checking Democrat. The average brother is not just checking Democrat. When they go Let me tell you this, hon. There are no Republicans on the ballot. You understand? So what they do down at the Board of Elections is they challenge people's signatures. And then they'll say, okay, let's say you need 300 signatures, right? And you turn in 350. If I know somebody that works in the Board of Elections, I can get them to invalidate 70 of those signatures, right? So now you had 280 signatures, and now you don't have enough to make the ballot. But so even it, that it, person it, wouldn't that person wouldn't have enough finances to, to, I'm, to, to, to do number, a legitimate no, no, campaign. No, no, honey. I'm talking about just, just, just. 
facts. You know, I'm using small numbers because they're easy to add in my head. No, I, what I got I'm you. Is that still. The board of elections is our problem. And now that it's been uncovered through the misdeeds of the city treasurer, I think the feds are going to come in and start looking at our voting systems. So what I'm again, what I'm going to tell everybody is the people of the city of Chicago. Yes, we have been getting pushed into the Democratic mm -hmm. Party um, and now we're leaving. We are leaving the Democratic Party. We are done. And so we're asking. I, the, I don't believe you. You don't let have me, to believe me, me honey. Stop. You don't live here. Hold you don't on. eat my own chicken. We don't hold know on. you. Hold I'm giving hold you hold inside on. information. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me just stop you right quick. Mm -hmm. I don't believe you. I don't believe for a second. You don't you know have, us. We don't know you. I'm telling you. That's can, like can me I, telling I, you. Can that's I, like can you I, telling I, me something that happened in your house, and then I say, I don't no, 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 no. You're I'm telling, telling me honey. something that's happening in your city. I know. I'm, my mayor, I'm, my mayor, not Lisa your Curry, house. My mayor, my mayor, the mayor of the city of Chicago did a press conference yesterday, specifically talking about how the Republican Party is rapidly taking over the city of Chicago, and that's why he got on TV and called us uh, extremists. He always this says is real. That. This is real, just, real life. He always says that. No, he but yesterday was yesterday was particularly bad. And I heard you were from Chicago, hon. What high school did you go to? I went to Roberto Clemente. Oh, what's that? What's up? I went to Winnie Young. So okay, you Chicago for real, West oh, Side so, people. Oh, so I'm you on are, West Side. So you are you smart. You you smart. Very, smart. very I, me yeah. too. Me too. I'm I'm very street smart. Are you from the West Side, baby? I already yeah. know. You don't Look, got I, I don't, when you say you went to Clemente. Yeah, yeah. Look, so, I don't want to be rude when I say this, right? And don't mm -hmm. hate me. Don't hate me for saying this, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't mean any disrespect when I say I this. I don't. Let's spit it um, out. It it seems to me from what I've seen that black people, the worse the candidate, the more likely they're gonna vote for that candidate. That's not true. That's not true. You didn't poll us on that. Well, Again, well, what this is what on... we've been presented. Yeah, but we have eyes and like no, can but you read don't stories and see what's happening all across the country. But you don't know He's what's happening Chicago in the too. board of elections. I'm not. I'm not this, from this, Chicago. I this, moved this, to white, this white guy is from Chicago too. I know, and what I'm saying is, as a person here, one as a, a legitimate, trusted voice of Black Chicago, I'm telling y'all yeah. what's happening straight up. I am. Can I'm not I, making can this I, up. Can I'm I play a video for you? I'm telling you that this is a board of elections. It don't have nothing to do with the quality of people want to vote for somebody bad. They are presenting a shit list of candidates to us every single time. And it's this group of power hungry, liberal, progressive, liberal liars who are doing this to us. And that's why my show is so important because I'm the only one putting this out. And the more and more I put out, people are like, wow, how do you know this? Because they put it in like behind paywalls in the Tribune and our yeah. people never know. And our media doesn't report it to the people. I'm the only one who reported right. what the city So what happened to Biden? What happened with Joe Biden winning? It's the same with, shit, uh, Jim right? Crow Joe. Let me tell you what happened with Jim same Crow shit. Joe. Um, we're same gonna... shit <laughs> yeah, we call him Jim Crow Joe on my show. So let me tell you what happened with Jim Crow Joe. Um, when my Donnie, that's what I call Trump, because Trump 2024, baby, black Chicago for Trump all the way. Um, but um, when Jim Crow Joe, um, I'm sorry, when my Donnie came to Chicago in 2016, he was going to do a Chicago rally. Well, I know a gentleman uh, very, very well who said that Bernie Sanders paid them to go down to the UIC forum and totally disrupt that event. OK, he paid them lots of money to go down there and act the fool. So. What happened is the media began to disparage Trump very, very harshly, which created an emotional response. And the people said, we're going to vote for Jim Crow Joe. And now we understand that Joe is the last living Dixiecrat and we're never doing that again. You got to be a fool to can vote I, can for I, Hold on. Can I say, let me just say this. Mm -hmm. You just said that the media was able to incur an emotional response in the black community mm -hmm. to get vote a certain way. Um, yes. Don't you that think it can't, do it's that not happening again? again? It's not. I promise <laughs> you. Do let me tell you why it's not going to happen again, friends. Because this illegal immigration situation has completely turned Black Chicago off. The first amount. So on my show, again, I got the only conservative right wing show on Black radio here. So a lot of the aldermen call my show and give us a lot of inside information from City Hall. So there's an alderman named Raymond Lopez, who I love, love, love Ray Lopez. Ray That's Lopez. Right. Yeah, Ray Lopez called my show and Ray said when they gave out the first 51 million, I want to let everybody know that this 51 million dollars is not taxpayer money. This is money from an opioid settlement that we got and we were supposed to build rehabs and re, you know, refurbish communities that have been decimated by the opioid crisis. 
So instead of building rehabs where we see people leaning and rocking and rocking and leaning all over Chicago, instead they took that $51 million and gave it to some people who ain't never paid taxes in the city of Chicago. So this is what has pissed the people off because we've been here for generations. Even the house I'm talking to y'all in right now, my grandparents bought in 1972 so that their grandkids could always have somewhere to live and I live here with my child. So when they talking about giving all this money to illegal immigrants and we've been paying property taxes for 51 years, we got a problem. So I'm, I'm telling you guys, Chicago um, is about to shock the nation. Think positive about us. I have a question. Did, yes, love. Does the fact that the uh, Venezuelans, uh, the immigrants that are coming here now, um, that they have like a far less, you know, rate of violent crime than the black population that's in, you know, endemic a to lie. Chicago. It's a lie. And CWB uh, Chicago, hold on, honey, Hey, look, here's what I'll tell you. I, I've been here for three Whoa. years now, and, Whoa, and I, no, I didn't no, grow no, up here. No, I grew up in New Orleans, but I tell you what, I ain't looking over for my shoulder for no fucking Venezuelans well, around yes, here. And you should be. People. I'm telling you, you should be looking for them as well. So CWB Chicago just released the Okay, that's, that's cap. Week. Hold on. <laughs> And um, they said that the crime, again, from the Venezuelans particularly, is up 2,000%. Yeah, so well, not, then what, how come every time in the train that I've ever seen somebody crime. be attacked or aggressed against, it's always been a sun person? Every time I've ever no, seen any violence any occur anybody. in the city, it's always been some people. In Chicago, baby. You don't know who's doing it. If you shoot, if you <laughs> kill somebody, <laughs> Chicago, wait a minute, I want to put this out there so everybody can. Yeah. Right, here, here's if what I think. I think those Venezuelans are probably Chicago, on the whole uh, better for Chicago than a lot of the some people that already live here. I live here my whole life. I told you I went to Whitney Young. I live in the Austin community. Not, not to say it's that you're Austin, not, because that I, Austin, I think that's probably not the case. But I know I'm telling you, I ain't never felt. I live in Chicago's largest black community. Largest. One of the Austin's very dangerous. I've Austin, never been scared. Austin never, is very dangerous, though. We're being fair. I, I, but I ain't, I'll never feel dangerous. Oh, you're I've not scared. My whole life. I got <laughs> you see that United video of the white woman you know, who got, everything. like, you know, jacked in, at, um, and, and, the and street corner in the middle of the night? I, she looked like she was scared. That doesn't mean to be rude either. No, because they came out very rude. They came out extremely rude. No, don't, don't say that they that the Venezuelans no. have a lower crime rate. When they more, do. When they have a far but lower them. crime rate. They the statistics them. have been rolled out, and it, the some people have the, the probably the, some that people that in America probably have the highest violent crime rate. High school you went to love. He's from New Orleans. I'm He's from New Orleans. Orleans. I'm not from Chicago. Oh, so very, not from very Chicago. dangerous city. So I've lived here for the past three years, and I'm trying to tell you that the only violence, the only acts of aggression that I've seen from anyone Don't in my no entire case. time here have been from Sun people, 100% exclusively. And, 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 it's and they're very honey, common. you got to get out because guess what? They are the the illegal immigrants are jumping on people in the South Loop down there. Yeah, on well, I've never seen it. And well, you got to go see. You should go down there to Wadsworth Elementary. I on drove past a bunch of fucking illegal immigrants on the South Side. The other day and they were doing I nothing talk, i want to get this point out there is an illegal immigrant shelter at wadsworth elementary on 64th and university in across south the shore. street from that yeah no no that's not south shore that is Woodland. Woodland. um so anyway so across the street from this school is a senior citizen home those illegal immigrants in wadsworth elementary jumped on an 80 year old man and busted his head to the white man mm, they I are know. robbing those senior citizens they are doing drugs they are shooting they are pimping those women up and down cottage grove I'll i do really pimping. encourage you to do some research before you open your mouth and speak hey, on my uh, class nowhere did i say that they're not hey. out there committing crimes they said no, no, that they but you said there are more and you can't quantify that love you can't right p right P Ray, P yes, Ray, love, can I I'm can sorry. I just stop you for a second? I okay. gotta read these super chats. Um okay. IA, IA says, I'm starting to think the push for AI might be because gliders are about to become an endangered species. Someone, something has to do the thinking. Oh <laughs> <sighs> salute to Miguel Wano. He says, please stop talking over people, love. He called you love, so that's good. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, let me let me, let me just say let me, let me just let me just um say this because I, I I think you don't understand that like black people are fixed they never change. How you like, didn't poll us? You know I didn't take your poll. You can't. We don't need to do a poll. poll. We don't, you don't need know yeah. what we'll do. What kind of low stuff? Can, can I just say? can I show you this? Can I show? You, no, can I just I'm show you this right quick, love? Thing to say about our people. love, 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 love. love. I yes, gotta love. let me let, let me. Let me let me just show you. With other major cities. Uh, this is 1973. Anybody by the mayor uh, and uh, 
the mayor runs it. Chicago's fortunate in that when compared with other major cities, uh, it has provided more opportunity for blacks than perhaps any other major city in the country. Although a black explorer, John Baptiste du Sable was Chicago's first settler in 1765. It wasn't until the early 1900s that a sizable black population was established in Chicago. It was composed of Southern migrants who had been lured north by the promise of jobs at good wages. See, y'all were migrants. You see yes, that? I say that all the time on my show. I say it, I say that these are illegal immigrants. Our grandparents were migrants. You see what I'm saying? Like, there is such a big trick being played on the people, and the people don't know that they've been tricked into no, but what, the trick. How's that the trick? You, 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 you all migrated to Chicago. Yes, and my grandparents. You brought GDs and you brought GDs and No, BDs GDs were formed and... on the south side. The BDs were found on the south side, not in Mississippi. Well, we didn't bring whatever. And those gangs, hey, wait a minute, because let's talk about gang culture. Gangs in Chicago were initially formed to protect black people. black people from the white gangs, okay? Mm. And then, because um, before I say all of this, on my show, I had one of the founders of the Vice Lord gang. This is one of the largest gangs in the country. You know, in Chicago, we don't have Crips and Bloods. We got Vice Lords, BDs, GDs, Foles, Kings, all that stuff. We got our own gangs. So these gangs in black communities were initially formed to protect the black population from the white flight. But that's they all say the same thing. Wait a they all say that to the Every gang, Let every gang leader say the same gentlemen. thing. That's yeah, they always say that bullshit. Hey, I got a quick question. Violence. Let me finish. Love. So when they, when they, when they, um, when the communities totally changed, according to my guest on my show, who was a man named Rick Adams L, who was the don of the Four Corner Hustlers and the founder of the Pee Wee Vice Lords, he said that there was a very um, concerted effort to criminalize these organizations because initially they were social organizations, which is why Nixon funded them with lots and lots and lots and lots of money. You However, the social organizations? they were initially, this is why Nixon gave them all this money. But what happened? They were they were they were embedded in that money. They were they were doing crime criminal action. No, that no. Money. So that's what I was gonna say. The so conservatives some people were. took that money and flipped it into crime. But then you got other yeah. people who took that money and flipped it into great things. So what they did, according to Rick L, who came on my show, he said that they locked up all the leaders, right? Because leaders were like, yo, our people just came up here. We buying these buildings. We're trying to grow. Um, so they locked up all of these people on a, on a slew of charges. I think he went to jail for like uh, taxes or something. So we, they locked them up, the leadership, for 10 years. When they we got all know out, this. there were Everything new people Everything you're saying, out. we all know them. Everything you're so saying, no, we've heard already. Know, if you knew, no, no, you we've heard it. That we brought BDs from Mississippi. No, no, we don't no, know we, about that. No, 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 no. What, what you're describing right now happened in New Orleans. It happened in Atlanta. It happened hey. in Memphis. It happened in, yes. in uh, hey, love. Baltimore. We've heard this story. I got story. a quick question. But let me say this real quick, and I'll shut up. I'll shut up. I'll shut up with I say this. Mm -hmm. It's important that you understand it, and I mean this, I said it with the utmost confidence, right? Mm -hmm. So that you know this, so that you understand this. Mm -hmm. Like my good friend, the crime chaser says. I love I, Oh, <laughs> I, I, I can tune that really, really, for real. He mm -hmm. loved being black. And he yes. showed, he showed to tell the truth, and he showed shame the devil. You might not like the truth. The truth is ugly as hell, but he gonna tell it. I know Martin. We both the been black. Hurts. I'm talking I about Og. I'm talking about Og right here. He huh? loved being black. I'm that, talking about the whole story. Hey, that leads he into my question. He's going to tell the truth. No. I do. And that's why I, I tell the truth about black folks. And we got to, again, I does too, one. though. I, I, this guy hey. does too, though. Hey, love, how yeah. how much Ock Nation have you, have you watched before? Are you how familiar much, with the show? What you Are say? you familiar with the show, Ock Nation? No. So one of my um, followers told me to um, come to the show. He's like, hey, check out this show that y'all doing. So I just wrote in the comments like, hey, it's a spokesperson from Black Chicago here. And then someone sent me this link and here I am. So um, I never seen it, but I'm reading these comments and I don't even think this is space for me. Um, they said this is what's wrong with the sun, sisters and all that. And uh-uh, uh-uh, you know, yeah. uh-uh. No, respect. Uh -uh. I, I could respect. So I, just, I, well, I thank y'all for inviting me here. You know, I just wanted to give y'all a pull up yeah. from the West Side. Again, shout out to my brother. Can I ask you before, you before you go? Is it all right if I ask you one more question? Yes. Um, are you familiar with the gun memorial? The, the gun memorial? Yeah. No, tell me more. Okay, are you looking at the screen? Yes. Okay, so this is this 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 site actually put faces to all of the dead people in the in the people who die via 
gun violence in America. Mm -hmm. so this is the this is the one for Chicago. They do every city, every state, every town for Chicago. So this is these are the people that have been killed with guns, shot to death with guns. Mm -hmm. uh, do you what, what jumps out at you about this um, risk? Because we're in November right now, going down in October. What jumps out at you when you look at this? What immediately like? What What are some of the thoughts you're thinking when you're looking at this? Uh, these are young black and Hispanic people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. What other? What else are you seeing? Like, um, what else? Are the thoughts do you, Do you have? I see that a bunch of I see a bunch of people who left very sad families. I have relatives who've been murdered on Chicago sidewalk. So I know I, I get this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump did. Matter let me just make a quick point. Donald Trump, when he did Operation Legend and he sent the feds to Chicago, Operation mm -hmm. Legend saw three murders in my family. So that's why I'm totally team Trump, mm -hmm. pushing him all the way because he helped us get over 20 years of mourning. So I, I get this gun memorial. I, I get it. Okay. Can I also ask you this? So. Mm -hmm. So since you, you gun violence has personally affected you and you yeah. completely understand it, um, mm -hmm. when you said black and Latino, like that to me that that just seems strange because it's literally ninety percent black and like I'm ten percent. I'm Latino. seeing Puerto Ricans. I'm seeing Mexicans. You know, so yes, I I don't want to discount them, but I'm saying. I, you asked me what I see. Oh, uh, you know, black, young, okay. black and Latino people. This is the city of Chicago, baby. I know people mm -hmm. get killed, get killed rather. I, I've had that, so I want you to make. But it's mostly point, black, this, right? Would you say? Would, These would you say that is over? Would These you say it's overwhelmingly black? Yes. Okay. Um. So yeah, like just think about that, man. Like I do. I think about my people every day. Every day, I now, lost two first cousins and an uncle on Chicago sidewalks. So yeah, I'm already thinking about it. Do you think that the race that kills like this? They were killed by it, black people, just like all interracial crime. Now, black people are shooting each other way more than other people. I will definitely give that to us. However, however, um, I think that there are two things at play here. Number one. You have to understand that um, this is a coin, a term that I coined um, that I want more people to pick up, um, and it's called Negrophobia. Negrophobia is the hate of the Negro. You don't have to be a non-Negro to be Negrophobic. You can be Negro and be Negrophobic, but this mm -hmm. is Negrophobia. Period. What period, causes period, Negrophobia? Period. Huh? What, what 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 causes Negrophobia? Um, low self-esteem. Oh, well, intra intra-racial Negrophobia. Is caused by low self esteem. Um, Can I ask a question? Could it be? Yes, sir. Yeah, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Where, where does the um, Venezuelans um, fit into this? Um, Who gives a fuck about the Venezuelans? We're not talking about them right now. We're no, you, you, made, you said earlier you made the claim yeah, that they yeah, commit earlier you said well, they are, you said, they are, but this don't have yeah, so Max, this. Yeah, you know they're yeah. out here robbing people with machetes, raping little girls at the beach. Like yeah, we know we know that MS thirteen MS thirteen do that. We don't hear about it every day. Unlike MS you, you do hear about it. Go on, see MS Chicago. They do a very MS thirteen recording it. In my city, MS thirteen only do that to their own kind. They don't no, do that. No, they doing it to black folks up here. I swear to God. I, I swear to I God. I so, so, so what do they? So what do they? So what do they fit that in the gun memorial though? Maybe no. Maybe they're not shooting at Venezuelans. Who knows? I don't know. I ain't never looked oh. at the gun memorial. I don't have to look at the gun memorial to understand gun crime in Chicago. This is my life. I live in Austin. Okay, but you feel safe, right? My whole life. I love it here. Love, love, right. love, love, love the Austin community. How do you, how do you, how do you um navigate the like what what keeps you safe when other people aren't safe? Um, I land my business. You know, the, the west side of Chicago is a place where if you mind and um my Clemente buddy can affirm this, um, for the most part, if you minding your business, you will be okay. Now, there are instances where there are um random acts of violence. But over here in Austin, this is mostly lick back. You you hurt me, I'm going to hurt you. You hurt me, I'm going to hurt you. I don't hurt anybody. I have a very specific goal of turning my city red, and it's working. 
You know, I'm raising the self-esteem of our people and letting them know that it's American as apple pie, but it's also as American as sweet potato pie because we at home. So we don't need people to come and tell us what's wrong with us. We don't have to ask anybody for a permission. And now that we see that this dysfunction has totally gotten out of control, we got to make better choices. That's it. Once we start, so make, once we get the self-esteem to make better choices, we'll have better outcomes. But the first thing you got to do is raise the self-esteem of the people. And pointing out the flaws of the people will not raise their self-esteem. It won't even make them listen to you. The fact that I'm on WVON, for those who don't know, WVON is W Voice of the Negro. We're the so oldest black. black. We're the oldest black radio station in America. We crowned Aretha Franklin the Queen of Soul. When Martin Luther King lived in Chicago, he hosted the morning show on WVON. Barack so when are we gonna change? Huh? So when are we gonna change? Um, the like we had all... here. I'm telling you, love. I'm telling okay. you. I'm telling you. You're not I'm... watching the news and all these press conferences with black people saying we're oh, I'm watching the Democrats. It. All, no, all I'm saying, all I'm saying is right. Mm -hmm. Like after, like, like a year from now, I need you to come back on the show. And tell me, like, what's the difference? I like, will. When, if if I black will people do. have like progressed, page, Black Excellence Hour. Send me a note, and we. I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna check it yeah. out. Yep, yeah, maybe we can go eat some heat burritos or something one day. <laughs> <laughs> let me, let me, let me ask you this though. Um, uh -huh. So, so like about this gun memorial. So when you see all these black faces. Mm -hmm. Murdered, and mm -hmm. you said that um, the cause of Negro phobia is the internal, no, intraracial, intraracially, it's okay. low self esteem. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, it's the cause of the person who's black having Negro phobia is low self esteem. Absolutely. What, what part of that could you give the person a break and say, like, well, goddamn, like, look at this shit, like, they killed. Like, look how many murders that these... I don't have to look at these people. I look at empty seats at my table. So I don't got to look at these people to understand no, that. I'm talking about the person who you're claiming is scared of black people because... No, not, no, not scared. So when we talk about a phobia, like... Okay, phobia, phobic. That don't mean okay, hold on. I don't really caught up with that. No, the no. The person who's phobic, the person who's phobic of black people, you're putting that in on them. And you're saying it's because of their own self esteem. Internalized low self esteem. Right, mm -hmm. right. So really, like, black people are a killing machine. And no, not a killing know. machine. I ain't never killed somebody. You killed somebody before? Hold on, hold on. But I said black people. Are you black, you, love? How come when y'all how come when y'all open a grocery store, it's us, we open the grocery store, but when somebody get killed, it's just them. <laughs> Real shit. What, they, Real what shit. are you talking about? We got, wait, well, hold on, hold on. Again, I live in Austin. One of we got black men. We, we got, we got black a black stores. man. That's natural. That's regular, regular stuff. When somebody, we got multiple black stores over here. That's we, how we live. Yeah, yeah, but, that, but hold on, hold on. That's something for the black, race. Black, the black no population. Man. Hold on, hold on. Mm -hmm. The black population in every city, in every town, the black population is a killing machine. The population. Mm -hmm. The black population in every you. city is a killing machine. Or so, nor can we say it, the killing machine is mostly populated by blacks. Let's say that. They're the ones doing most people. of the killing. Let's put it that way. What's the difference? <laughs> what's, what's, I want to say what's the difference. Say, don't I want to say what's the difference. You don't kill. You, don't kill. Yeah. you know. Wouldn't so you, thank, you, thank you, New Orleans. On, but, but wouldn't you give the person. Same in New Orleans and everywhere else, by the way. Huh? The person, no, no. I said thank the person, you, New Orleans friend. They say you're from New Orleans. Hold on, but but the person who who's, who's experiencing this phobia you talk about. Low self-esteem. But why are you attributing this low self? Why couldn't they just attribute it to what they're seeing? Because like in order to do some dysfunctional stuff like that, you don't like yourself. In order for you to take a risk of shooting somebody and spending the rest of your life in the Illinois Department of Corrections facility means you don't like yourself. You don't have any hope for yourself. You don't respect your family. There's nothing no, I know killers, that you like. I I know killers that kill right after they smoke and drink and go have sex. They and, and they smoking none. and they drinking and having sex because all of those things raise endorphins because they have low self esteem. No, they just live their life. No, they live their life. They love their life. They, 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 they kill the next day. They kill the next day. They, they, and because they, they, they self esteem still still low. When that high comes down, you're talking about psychopaths and sociopaths. And now you're dysfunctional again. 
I'm telling you, that's why my show is so focused on self-esteem, y'all. If we raise the self-esteem of ourselves and our people, I'm telling you, you're going to have way better outcomes. I used to work at alternative high schools in the city. Um, you know, alternative schools are where they send the kids that go to IDOC. So a lot of my kids had ankle bracelets on, the baby mamas, people who live in like section yeah, 8. I went to alternative school. school. So on and so forth. Anyway, so when I was working at the alternative schools, my students are the, uh, are the soldiers of Chirac, okay, straight up. Um, but the reason in my classroom, I didn't allow no cussing. I didn't allow no food, any of that stuff, right? So my class was like tight. And everybody's like, how, P. Ray, um, how was your classroom so tight? I said, because I told them in the door, hey, check it out. You got a job to do here. I got a job to do here. I don't want to hear no cussing in my classroom. I don't cuss at you. You don't cuss at me. I don't listen to cussing music on the way to work. I don't want to hear that, y'all. We here to do a task so we can all go home back to what we like. You know what I'm saying? Let's keep the vibe high. When I was there and respecting them and raising their self-esteem, telling them, you can read. Stop listening to them. You can read. Stop. You know, your whole life they've been telling you can read. But look at you. You just read, didn't you? They lying. You can read. You know, that makes people feel good. And then they will give you more of their better parts. But if you only telling people what's wrong with them, all you're doing is lowering their self-esteem, which then fuels their dysfunction. People know, everybody knows what's wrong with them every morning when they put their feet on the ground. They don't need people to tell them. So why do you like Trump? Because Trump tells Ooh, everybody. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for asking. So, so, so let me. I'm saying, why do you like Trump? Because Trump always tells people how it is every day, no, how it no, is. He talks about the shithole like cities. No, he, Trump. He, let me he, tell he you, Trump said, told oh, me, okay. and I played this on my show. I played on my show every single week. I went to the White House three times. Trump invited me. Um, that's why I call him my Donnie, and I love him. Um, so Trump invited me. I went with the Young Black Leadership <laughs> Summit. Um, and when I went with the Young Black Leadership Summit, um, again, if you check out Black Excellence Hour, you'll hear this excerpt. He says, black, uh, black people, you all built this country. I mean, everybody has something to do with it, but you all did the most work and you deserve the most credit. But and you deserve a government that works for you, but it's the left that wants to wreck, ruin, and destroy our nation or something like that. I was in the White House in the East Room with my shoes off, standing on the rug, um, listening to him say that. He raised my patriotic esteem because in 2016, I went into political exile and moved to sunny Senegal in West Africa to protest Obama, Rahm Emanuel, and Alderman Jason Earth. So I take this very seriously. Trump red-pilled me. Trump made me a super patriot. I'm an eighth-generation American. Everything from sea to shining sea come for me and me first. You understand? I know that. Like I said, I'm American in sweet potato pie. And when I went to Africa and I'm speaking French and I'm on the beach eating fish, all this stuff, they told me, hey, American girl, you're American. You're not us. Look at how you dress. Look at how you eat. Look at how you get money. Look at everything. Everything about you is American, American girl. Stand on that. And that is what, you know, really made my patriotism rise. That what made my tribalism rise. People say, P. Ray, you went to Africa and learned tribalism. Yes because I am a proud Negro person. You know, I don't call myself black because black lumps us in with the immigrant class. African-American lumps us in with the immigrant class. Minority lumps us in with the immigrant class. People of color lump us in with the immigrant class. And that's not my business. Um, so as a Negro, as someone who is, you know, indigenous to this land, it's mine and I love it. And my Donnie reminded me of that when we went to the White House by specifically talking about what black people did for this country, number one. Number two reason that I like Donald Trump, um, as I told y'all, uh, Operation Legend, which brought the feds here, helped my family get some justice. Number three is that Trump uh, permanently funded the HBCUs. So I went to Hampton University on a full academic scholarship where I majored in finance. Um, and Trump, before my Donnie got in office, HBCU presidents had to go before Congress every year and beg for money like slaves. So when Obama was in office, three HBCUs closed. And then while Biden, Jim Crow Joe, was in Congress, nine HBCUs closed. So that's 12 HBCUs closed in Joe's time. Um, Trump said, you know what? We're not going to have the HBCUs go in big no more. We're going to take this whole budget, make it a line item in the White House budget. The White House budget does not go under debate. And now HBCUs are permanently funded. HBCUs educate the overwhelming majority of Black professionals in this country. So my Donnie made a direct investment in Black education and the Black professional class. everybody knows this though everybody uh, you knows. asked me but you asked me why i like him i told you no no i actually like him i said but trump talks like what we're saying trump said the same thing that we're saying no but he didn't say it to me in the white house he didn't, he didn't say have to say to you in the white house i'm just telling you that uh, you're right well he gotta hold right. back though i got 
Trump has I'm afraid back Trump told you what you wanted to hear. No, he, no, he, didn't. no he didn't. Don't be you, a hater because he did. You don't think, you don't he think Trump sees? Truth. You don't think Trump sees what we all see? Yes, like absolutely. We all see it, but you don't fix people by telling. What's the reason why? No, no, no. Okay, no, about that. What do we all see? So, not not to interrupt here, but maybe for just for a second, uh, like. I think we all agree on a lot of these talking points that you're saying here for the most part, like you've got a lot of agreement in, in this group with a lot of your viewpoints, but what we focus sort of specifically what Ock focuses on, you know, and we come and join him here to do is focus crime. on like the everyday crime, violent, crime. The violent, violent crime. murderous, I'm you, assaulting. I, I know this. I'm well, this right, right. I'm, but what we're, we're saying like the one thing that we we seem to be clashing on a little bit here is that, what we have seen on this channel over the last few years is that the people in cities, the major cities in the United States that are out here committing violent crime are overwhelmingly black, right? Mm -hmm. And that's like, is that something you would say is fair to say? It is fair to say. I, like I said, I've never disagreed with that point. Okay, the, yeah. So I that's what I was sort of getting at earlier. That's all. No, no. I think our disagreement comes in the way that we present that and the reasoning behind it. Now, I also want to tell you guys another reason that the city of Chicago is completely out of control is because you will not get any justice out of the Cook County courts. There was a story um, that came out last week or two weeks ago. There was a man, he killed four people, four black, a black man killed four black people on separate occasions in the city of Chicago. They did the investigation. They caught the man. They gave him 38 year, a 38 year sentence, which means with good time, that's 19 years for killing four people. There is no disincentive not to, uh, cr there's no disincentive to crime in Cook County. If you shoot somebody, there's a 92% chance you'll get away with it. If you murder somebody, there is an 82% chance you'll get away with it. So what's the deterrent from crime? And even if they catch you, that doesn't mean you're going to stay in jail. That doesn't mean that they're going to lock you up in the county. They're going to give you a ban and send you home, and then you can commit more crimes. This is a policy failure. But that's what the Black Caucus wanted, though. The Black Caucus yeah, yes, demanded I agree. this. Uh -huh. And I talked to these Black Caucus members um, at length. So I grew up yeah. as a princess in the Democratic Party here on the West Side. My first job was working for Barack and Rob Lagojevich in Springfield. Okay, I do this. But what turned me off, it made me completely leave the country, leave. I'm talking about grab my family and move to a whole new country. Um, and my family has not been to Africa in centuries. Um, but I went over there because I could see that our elected officials are definitely failing us. And I talk about this on the show. We have a black lieutenant governor. We got a black Cook County board president. We got a black water reclamation um, president. We got a black mayor. We got all these chain, I mean, these ca black caucuses, the speaker of the house um, down in Springfield, black, the president of the Senate, black. But if you look at the statistics, wallet.com did a, um, did a analysis of like black and white equity. Illinois came number 50 um, in ranks of equality between whites and blacks with all of this black leadership up top. So what I say to the people is just because you got a black leader does not mean, does not equate to prosperity for black people if these black leaders are representing platforms that are harmful to black folks. And now my people get it. People call my show y'all every week like, yo, P. Ray, we so sorry. We used to call you all type of coons and talk about you, but now we see everything you said is the truth. And guess what? We done with the Democrats too. It's not just your Donnie, it's our Donnie too. We want to let the whole world know we done with them. You convinced us. They are terrible. But the people don't know because the people don't know. You know what you know when you know it. But we don't punish people for ignorance.